Uh, today we're going to take a look at 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Second Timothy chapter number 2. And we're going to look at verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Everybody there? The Word of God says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Now, in that text, or in that uh, passage of Scripture right there, uh, most of the time what comes to mind is always having to really get your Bible, open it up, and then uh, read it, and then study it, uh, going to Sunday school and Bible study and church service. Uh, uh, not to uh, knock any of that, but what this passage right here is talking about is presenting ourselves to God to be used by God in such a way in which He is pleased. Let's take a look at this right here. Um, as we see this, I would like to just entitle this Rightly Divide. Can you say Rightly Divide? Rightly Divide. And it's necessary and important at the very por bottom portion of that verse it just says Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. So we must rightly divide. In order to get to that point of rightly dividing, uh, there are several things that have to be done. And it starts off right there in the first word right there in verse number 15. Here we have in our Bibles, in our King James Bibles, we have study. Uh, and this study right here is, is what comes to mind immediately is breaking open the Bible or breaking open the Word of God and, and start reading and breaking out your paper and your pen and, and all the different helps that we have regarding that and, and really getting into it. But, but what we learn as we, as we look at different Bibles and read different commentaries and, and see what what the, uh, the really meaning of this particular word is here and it shares with us that this study really means is to be enthusiastic is to be eager is to, is to be zealous about what about serving God that means that we have to go into uh, into his word with the mindset of being eager not just eager just to, just to read, but to be eager. And it tells us in the next word. So first of all, we have to be eager. Uh, we have to be eager to get into God's word. We have to really be enthusiastic about getting, into, about getting into God's word. So this word study is not so much about books or anything else. It's about having a mindset of being enthusiastic and being eager. Amen. Just to, just to be with the Lord. To, to, to know something about him. Uh, so we have to be eager, amen, to be with the Lord. Then it goes on, eager to do what? To show. And the word show lays it out for us in regards to, to uh, show is, is uh, to present. In other words, to stand beside. So when we take this together, it's a study to show thyself. Here's, and so in this study is not only do we, do we rightly divide or anything like that, and, uh, but we are to properly interpret the word of God. Not only that, but to be attentive and busy. Study to be attentive and busy. Uh, so if I'm going to study, 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 study. If I have to use the word study, if I use the word study, and a lot of us have used this word off the cuff, have you ever used the word I ain't studying you? <laughs> right, 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 right. So does, does, does that mean that you're studying someone or like that uh, or like that? It has more, so this word has more of a meaning than just opening up a book and things like that. It's being attentive, okay, being attentive, and not only being attentive, but being busy, busy in a sense of in, uh, 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 make, uh, let me read what it says right here. Uh, to be zealous or eager and to give diligence or to give diligence and, it's, uh, and then it talks about uh, this study or this uh, being busy and attentive is being more, once again, more than just looking in the book, more like that, but being who you are and being eager about it for the Lord. Uh, I wrote something here, but I can't have a clue what it, what it, what it says right there. You know, <laughs> but, but, I even adjusted my glasses too and I couldn't understand it, but that's okay. 
uh, but that's all right. So we're studying or basically being enthusiastic, eager, and being zealous about, about God. And then he goes on in which we have to show or to present or to stand beside or bring before or prove. Uh, so when you're talking about proving something, uh, proving something is, is uh, uh, this uh, right here. Study to show thyself uh, approved unto God. Uh, approved unto God. Present to stand by beside or to bring before or to prove. And proving has a, has a sense of, of uh, testing. Is that right? A, a testing. Uh, for instance, uh, it talked about how even gold and silver and things had to go through the fire in order to be tested to make sure that only uh, the quality is, uh, is on the other side of the testing. Uh, so this right here, proving or to, to show thyself, in other words, uh, is to prove or to present ourselves uh, approved unto God. So therefore, we go through a testing to be approved. Y'all catch that? We go through a testing to be approved. Wait a minute. How can you be approved before you go through some testing? You have to go through something in order to be approved, right? I mean, really, really, really. So as we go through something, so I'm eager to go through something to be approved for the Lord. Amen. My end result is to be approved by the Lord or for the Lord. Uh, so therefore, if I study to show thyself uh, approved unto God. Uh, so I'm going to be going through something in order to prove and, to, and, and in order to prove myself unto the Lord. And then it goes on and says, a workman, a workman, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Now, in regards to um, this, this, uh, uh, this, this workman, this workman now has been approved because we have been tested and now we've been accepted. Uh, now this workman is someone that is a toiler, a toil, a toiler, a worker, or a teacher. He goes on and says, rightly he says, workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly be ashamed, and ashamed is, is being basically disgraced or disfigured. So uh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Here's what we have right here in regards to the workman. Workman is someone who is not going to hold back but to do what he's supposed to and should be doing, not holding back. So this workman in which he's talking about right here, Paul is writing to Timothy and telling Timothy how to go about and doing things. Yes, you may say, yeah, this is for you, pastor. This is what you have to do. You've got to study to show yourself approved unto God. But in our actuality, this is for all of us. Because we all have got to prove ourselves unto God to be accepted unto him. We all have a standard and the standard which God has already set in order to be uh, accepted by, by Jesus, by God. This is a word that needed not to be ashamed. Uh, so if we're ashamed in, in really representing or presenting what God has for us, then, then we need to rethink that because Jesus Christ died for us and Jesus was not ashamed. God was not ashamed in sending his only begotten son just for us. So therefore, we should not be ashamed to do what we have to do for the Lord. So a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to tell someone that they need Jesus. Don't be ashamed, amen, to let someone know that Jesus is the answer. Yes, and we are not to be, not to be ashamed. Uh, but not only are we not to be ashamed, but it also tells us in his remaining parts is rightly dividing the word uh, of truth. Rightly dividing. And they talked about this rightly dividing as, as a, a, cut, a, a cut in a straight line. Cut in a straight line. It had mention of the priest. Whenever they had to sacrifice and the priest had to split or cut the sacrifice or the, the lamb or the sheep. And they had, they had to have a precision. It also made mention of a surgeon. When a surgeon makes an incision, he's straight with it. He has to have a steady hand. Uh, and he does that. And not only does he talk about being cutting straight, but also talking about during the time in which the Romans' roads were made, they were made straight and or, or as straight as they possibly be, possibly be. So therefore, when he talks about cut straight or cut in a straight line, it also talks about how uh, um, whenever you're working in the field or farms or something like that and you have to make a roll, he says go straight, cut straight. Uh, so we talk about rightly dividing, talking about cutting straight down the line, straight down the middle. So what does it mean? That means that don't be going off on no, no tangent and stuff. 
uh, don't let me try and take no shortcut. Just go straight. Or basically, uh, there's this one thing in which we sometimes use. Anybody ever use the word cut to the chase? Yeah, cut to the chase means just to get to the point. Get to the point without, amen, wasting time. I'm trying to do that today, y'all. You see, trying to get to the point. So if we're going to uh, present ourselves uh, to be, to be uh, we're gonna, we want to be approved by God or accepted, we got to be tested. And as we're testing, we, we're, we're, we're working, we're doing what, we're, what we should do for the Lord. Amen. Winning souls, telling someone about Jesus. And, and in order for us to tell someone about Jesus, it comes back around and cutting straight. Because ain't nobody got a lot of time to know about somebody you want to tell them about. You know, whenever I want to tell a story, I have a tendency of going kind of long and slow. Uh, so therefore, uh, just cut to the chase and tell me what it means. What are you talking about? Uh, so that's what here's, here he's saying. Look, do the work for the Lord. Uh, don't be ashamed in doing it. And then when we're doing that, we will be approved or accepted by God. And while we're being approved and accepted by God, amen, he's going to show us and teach us by the Holy Spirit to cut straight, amen, cut in a straight line. Amen. Don't be varying. Don't be going off on all type of stuff like that. Just tell it like it is. Because don't you know that Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Amen. He's coming back sooner than he came, than it was yesterday. Because yesterday when he said we're coming back soon, guess what? Today, he's coming back sooner. Amen. Time is just winding up and it's just getting shorter by the day. So therefore, we ain't got a lot of time, amen, to be telling the long stories about Jesus. Amen. We got to tell somebody that God sent his only begotten son, amen, to save our souls and save us from our sins. Amen. We are to accept him, amen, and keep from going to hell. Amen. I think that's blunt enough, don't you? Amen. If you want to go to heaven, amen, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. The Bible says, amen, when we leave this place after we accept Jesus Christ, amen, we're going to be with Jesus. Amen. And that's the best place to be. The Bible also says while we're still here and we've accepted Jesus Christ, we are in his hand. And the Bible says that because we are in his hand, nobody or nothing can pluck us out. Huh? Nothing, nobody can pluck us out. So once we're in, guess what? We are in good hands. Amen? Amen. We ain't talking about no insurance policy or nothing like that. Amen. Jesus Christ is all, amen, that we need. We do need one another, but I'm talking about the sense of salvation. Amen. Jesus is the one. But yes, study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth is so important. Yes. Why is it so important? Look at verse number 16. But shun, he says, Paul tells him, profane and vain or empty what? Talk or babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. You know, when you get a little bit of rumors and stuff going on. You know how it is. We have a tendency of putting a little bit of icing on it. Make it sound a little bit better. Or not so much better for the person you're talking about. But it just gets it just get bigger and bigger and, be, and worse and worse. Look. But it just goes to more ungodliness. But look at 17. It says, and there were. That stuff that people were babbling about. That, 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 uh, that worthless talk. Their word will eat as the a canker. It was spread like a cancer of whom he talked about two people, Hymenaeus and Philetus. So what happens is that what the word of truth is important about is to making sure that we rightly divide it and divide it the way in which it's supposed to be. What if somebody with a hammer just went and tried to separate the sacrifice? It, 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 it would not have been done properly. And, and no one wants a mess. What if uh, someone decided to prepare a meal for you and just, just threw it on the plate? Say, there you go. Uh, you remember you had your, had, 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 uh, you know, all the different areas of the, you know, your plate probably separated different areas and stuff. And this vegetable go there and this go there and the meat go there. And, the, and, and then what if all the juice from the meat flows on into your bread uh, thing and stuff like that? That's not what I wanted, you know, because it's thrown over there. What you want, you want it done precise and everything like that. 
Because God, he, he, he does things with precision. <clears throat> that's what he does. <clears throat> and that's what it says. The Bible says I hear regarding, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding uh, his word. Uh, you're over here in, in Hebrews. You can turn there with me if you want. But in Hebrews chapter number, chapter number 4, verse 12, it says it's right here. Regarding this, the sharpness of his word. He says, says this in Hebrews 4 and 12. He says that... Uh, for the word of God, we're talking about the word of God. We're going to rightly divide it. The word of God is, is quick. It means that it's living. Uh -huh. And powerful. And then it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and the marrow. And is a, who is this? Discerner of the thoughts and intents uh -huh, of the heart. So the word of God itself is sharp. So when we try to rightly divide the word of truth, then we most definitely got to be led by the spirit of God. So it's important for us to, to, to set ourselves aside or to be diligent and to be, to be zealous and to be, and to be, be, be ready to, to show or to present ourselves so we can be tested uh, in testing, going and tell somebody about Jesus that they may be saved and then Jesus, of course, God, he approves us or he accepts us in order for us to continue with his word because he wants his word to go out the right way. Amen. Now, as we're doing today, just simply the word straight in line, cut to the chase, rightly dividing. The door to church is open. Let us stand.